we are jumping right back into this. Where we left off unfortunately yesterday, but abruptly. Okay. Fun, yet everything's back to normal. Everyone gets to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Well, of course we're going to Yuri first, there's not even a question about that. Alex, your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotion. Good. We damn good. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've never been... But I've been able to prove so much thanks to you. Great day of reading in store for me. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri smile, gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you've gotten so good at something you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. Really? I don't know how you never had a choice, but sure. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Alex, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? Why? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Does she really enjoy reading or is that like her escape Ism thingy because no one wants to sit with her because she's not popular, I'm guessing. Well, that's one way to put it, but books are so full of amazing, inspiring people. Uh, Marks them away and I can't find buttons on my keyboard. I don't know why this is going to get super sad on us. People you want to fall in love with, or people you just know would make a really good friend. Chiefful people always put a smile on your face. What deep thinkings and problem solvers to discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know. And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. Hey Devil's Wigsy dude, how you doing man? It's been super long since I've seen you. And? I don't know why people make fun of a body type either, though. It seems super weird, but sure. And they hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you. I'm not a know-it-all, Alex. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a know-it-all. I will claim. If I could open this fucking bottle. Yeah. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I'm doing well, my man. Going to play through what is not at all a depressing game where nothing at all can possibly go wrong and no one at all is going to die or not love us. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. What's Bed Wars? Yeah, dude, I get that. Also, yeah, the work kind of been rough for me as well, so I also really haven't had a chance to stream and stuff. But hoping I'm going to need a schedule back together in some way. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Alex. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, I wish you'd be just like anyone else. Because you, you're the waifu. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see.
Minecraft Bed Wars. I did not even know there's a competitive side to Minecraft. The hell does like Bed Wars even mean? Is that the thing that they had a whole bunch of the streamers play that was like a battle royale kind of thing? Because the only thing when people say like Minecraft Bed Wars is either trying to blow people up with a bed in the one place, I can't, I don't really play Minecraft, or race to bedrock? That's, that's what is happening with her wrist. That's just how she is. Her wrist is really bendy. She's got a double joint. Well, I'll treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I could make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way. Kinda? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it as it's hard to explain then. As someone who has no Minecraft knowledge besides, like, some Let's Plays of Minecraft, I will accept that fact as it's hard to explain, so I also probably wouldn't really understand. Yeah. We're our friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. You want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Oh god, we're gonna have to read again. Ghost Under the Light Part 2 I don't remember when we read Part 1, but sure. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. Okay, it was the one about bathing. We probably got to try something about you bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette subtracting the eerie glow. My heart pounds, the silhouette glows. Closer. Closer. I open my umbrella, she's got two capitals, one after the other, just pointing it out. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. He steps into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in the rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to his forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding. I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stop. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. What? Well, okay then, Yuri. Not depressing at all. Minecraft PvP is very competitive. I don't think it was really surprised if I had to say that I did not even really know there was like a competitive or PvP side to Minecraft. Like, obviously I knew there was a lot of PvP maps and stuff, but I thought it was more just like... Fuck around. Is someone going to commit not alive? Um... From what I understand about the game, which isn't a whole lot, someone is definitely going to commit not alive. Or possibly going to commit not alive. And I'm just hoping it's not our girl over here, because she's now queen wifey, she has purple hair, so she wins. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. Instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Yeah, well, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure that someone's going to commit not alive. But the start of the game warns you that if you suffer from, like, depression, and if you're a child, you shouldn't play this game to deal with very... Was it like adult themes or something like that? I'm just kind of like, that's super cool in a dating sim. I want to be scarred for life after playing a dating sim. So I'm guessing. I've, it's my first time playing through it. Aside from being on the internet and knowing like what people speak about on the internet. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one is about. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Nope. They really assume that we have very, very good English literature knowledge and understanding of poems and poetry. 
Here he's having an even, hot, even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yeah, no, right? I prefer the dating sims where you have like four or five different people just throwing themselves at you, and no matter which one you pick, it's a happy ending. You know, maybe you get laid along the way, find love, all the good things. What was that one? Dream Daddies or Dating Dream Daddies or whatever it was called that had like a whole bunch of YouTubers and streamers as the voices. Like that one's legit. Everyone really liked you. Yuri nods. Not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my, ability to, my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge in Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back toward me. Well, I feel like this is one of the games you have to play through. Like, if you want to play games and also only have one hand. So, the visual novel's perfect right now where I can press one button and click. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can. Um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fa fails to complete a sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles if she doesn't want me to notice. You always. You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I return the fav can return the favor sometime. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. That bitch Monica always being a cock blocker, huh? But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah. I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. She gave me her poem. Who's she showing her other poem to? Or what poem is she showing to the other girls, at least I should say. Hi, Alex. I've thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival. Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. Whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It'll also make me happy to see. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. The style's gotten so refined, Alex. Yuri's been teaching a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. Somebody's jealous. I think I've heard her say more words in these past couple of days than she's talked in the whole year. Than she said in the whole year, or spoken in the whole year, not talked. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Uh, that's... An understatement. Uh, ha ha ha. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day, reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. All right, all right. <laughs> Good luck with your go-karting tomorrow, dude. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for dropping by, bro. Good night. Thanks so much, man. I get you. Just be careful, all right? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Oh, shadowing. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh, all right. Ugh. 
the lady who knows everything. I know a guy like that. He's might be the one sitting here. Um, an old t an old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the leg legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Oh, that's the clicker. Yeah. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it's kind of my own mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. Seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are made are more sad than happy. Uh huh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? No, that's when you write about orcs and demons and Lord of the Rings and stuff. Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Well, she doesn't even know the right terms. We got she ain't got shit on us. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. We found other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. So instead of just telling you that writing is good or okay or bad, we we'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. At least advice is a bit more useful than yesterday. Hmm, it's nice I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Okay, so does the whole world know that I have a thing for Yuri? I'm guessing yes. Uh... I didn't write this poem for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Alex. Tiori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Hehehe. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? And go play with everyone else now. Go play with everyone else now? That sounds surprising, like, really, like, little two-year-old children you, but okay. If you insist. Yay? I'm going home a little, a little bit early today, Siori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Siori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. much for hope for that now. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, you didn't even. Next. What a bitch! And she wonders why we don't like her. I could have set her poem on fire and thrown it at her. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Uh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. Deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. 
Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh... The glaring air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. <sighs> I'm really hoping that this is like... Okay. Okay. We're just gonna have to power through, move on, and accept what possibly might have happened to Sayori. In your books, maybe. Look, the only difference is that Suri isn't here. Uh. It seems you're right. Sigh. Suri helps light in the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone balances thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Mitsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times and not... To not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? First you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I don't want to force it. Oh. The curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of festival preparations. So, let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. The, re the only thing that her weird little vampire teeth bitch is good for. But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Suri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, no, no. That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. No, now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can't tell... Nah. I guess I never gave Suri enough credit. But I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I... But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes. She stares at her desk and folks and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Alex. The one who is truly useless. Aha ha, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. Probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Nosuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. This little bitch thinks we're going to help her? Excuse me? You don't even read my poem. And you talk shit about all my other poems, and I want my help. Nah. Fucking do it yourself. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Damn straight, bitch. Alex may not like to be around you if you only make him out to be a nuisance. Uh-huh. Girl got our back. So therefore, he may be more situated to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? This is more like he's just making excuses for Alex to go. What, what are you saying? The extremely meticulous work. Damn straight. And we be very meticulous. And baking isn't right? Just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Alex to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... He literally just said... I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Alex, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. 
I don't like the three dots at the end of the Sayori. That does not fill me with hope and confidence we're picking Yuri. Well, probably the most helpful, useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no, I was just saying... Ugh. He'll be helping Yuri then, Alex. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. I think assist assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki will be able... Will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell Natsuki's feeling a little sour. So is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. You feel the same way, Alex? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? You're not fucking paying attention. I didn't even do anything. No, no, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances, glances down between everyone in the room. Um, I'm sorry for this. I don't even really know why Alex picked me. And also, the cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. Yeah, I would just ruin them. Not at all like I want to go ahead and Yuri. They uh, go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that. So, so... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. You're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Yeah, fuck her. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri is trying to sound like Siori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Just because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Whew. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki. Out the door as they chat between each other. Um. Eh. I turn around. S Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. No, fucking carrier pigeons. How else do they expect us to communicate? Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Uh, my house? Uh, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I think we'd prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. Not like it should matter either way, so I'll just hit. I'll just need to make some. Make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Alex. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose all of you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extreme tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. What do you mean to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh... Uh, I, I didn't realize. I'm telling you I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it... As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah? I am too. 
After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots to the roof, even though it's gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. No telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance to have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. Is she going to still pitch up in her schoolgirl uniform is what I'm curious about. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clear clearly an introvert and, has an intimate pers and is an intimate personal in general. Is the right response to that General Kenobi Hitori Oki? I feel like that's the only correct response to a hello there. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been uh, thank you so much for the follow, Sorry, I really appreciate that. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting, it, but putting Yuri aside... I haven't heard a, I haven't heard a thing from Siori since she left club early the other day. We're talking to text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Siori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Siori's feelings aside when she might need me? Fuck, uh, we're gonna- please don't tell me we have to pick. I decide to visit Siori before Yuri comes over. Rather than ask her, simply tell her I'm coming over much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Siori's house, I knock on the door before entering myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses, like we were family. The house is quiet. Siori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. Where are her parents? Or siblings? Or any other person that she lives with when you run into someone's house randomly when you're still like a kid in school? Regardless if you welcome there or not, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm like arguing with. But that there's just no one there? I head up to her bedroom when I finally find her. Siori? Hi. Hi, Alex. Okay, did all load. I was like, that not boding well. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siori's room is as messy as it's always been. He's got a cow and a bird. And way too many plants that look like they're dying. I also recognize the same stuff animals and wall decorations she's had for years. I really hope the calendar hasn't been there for years because that just needs to be updated. Ehehe. <laughs> if you come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Yuri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. Ow. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. That seems super weird to do posters online. Well, this is also pre-COVID world, so... I don't know why you wouldn't go over to your friend to help them make a poster. Anyway. Uh, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Yuri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to that point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siri smiles, shaking her head. It's no good, Alex. Eh? 
Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this, this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. What the fuck is she on about? Like, I am so confused. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. She got super dark super quick and I'm very confused. Siori. I grabbed Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. But tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... Hey, it's always just Monica. How you doing? <laughs> Do you all have like... You all have like similar, the entire four, three, character, three, four, four. Like four characters, and if you just pop into random streams, streaming the games, be like, hey. So how is Natsuki the most uwu? And don't worry, Yuri, we we on your side for this in the stream. We believe Yuri is the true waifu, the others are just there to distract. Yuri gave me an empty smile. No, you're the weird one. Like, so. Because she's cute. So I have a question for Natsuki. What is what are the weird like Okay, we don't have an example here. What are those weird like little fang, demon teeth, barb things you have going on in like half of your stills? Just just curious. Like were you a vampire in a previous life? Do you sharpen your teeth? Do you wear fake teeth? Like I just you know? Just curious. Uh you really put me in a trap, Alex, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? Hehe. <laughs> You're really just going to make me sad, aren't you, Alex? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. I don't know. I'm just curious if you... Like, maybe you do something extra. I don't know if it's natural teeth. I don't know if it's just extra natural, really long, sharp teeth that you can't see the rest of your mouth, you know? And like half your stills. See, like in this still, she's got teeth. And if it wasn't Suki, it'd be a little... Eh, like just a little vampire tooth there and there. Just curious. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why I go to school? This shit got real. Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? Oh, that's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Tsuri kept this from me from the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me not to think about her? Why, Sayori? 
Uh, why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. If I knew I would have done nothing, I would have done everything I could to support you. And there's only so much that I can do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Alex. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. It also feels like a bat swung against my head. And, and then she smiles and laughs. Dope, dope, dope. Fills me with good feelings and good vibes. That's what, uh, That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Alex, there's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Siori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I want to gra gain grab Siori's shoulders. Let's not put her into a tight embrace. Alex, Siori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Alex? Siori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Siori's, Siori's arms remain at her sides. She stops sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Alex? I... Siri barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. All I want is all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Don't quite think it works like that, homie. As much as we just wish it was that simple. Not really. Siri, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Suri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Alex. The only time I'm not feel the only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Suri lets me go, and she does so. I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow, yeah. Going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, um, uh, it's, that's what I want, I promise. I, I think that would be nice then, yeah. Siori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, it's actually the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But, but, it's almost time for Yuri to meet at my house. At the very least, you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see... I see something that makes myself feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Uh... Thank goodness. You're a little early. Well, we almost done fucked up. I'm sorry, I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? 
No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. Once again, do I not live with people? You always could have texted me. If I'd known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked for you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I'll take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Uh -huh -huh. I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very cons that's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I'd be really embarrassed my room to your mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. That's super weird. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I saw Yuri's wrist. Oh, she's a which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. Just both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. We have a double bed. Decorations and the atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements, you know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm just to find an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess it's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Uh, is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I bought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on my way here, so I can have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think it'd be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. How much budget does this chick have? What's that wooden thing though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? One of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to sp spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. I can hate jasmine. Smell like old people. Oh no, that's lavender I'm thinking of. Lavender smells like old people. That's just true. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a very good way to describe it. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotion and helps you, f and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently clear and clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are these for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. Like, it's the different paper for origami. Is it just normal paper? Or like cardboard? Surely there's not like, unless it's pre, like perforated or pre-lined for where you should fold it. There's not like a specific thing called origami paper. Won't be using the paper for folding origami. Then why the fuck did I get origami paper? What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That sounds like a bunch of people are going to get fucking paper cuts. And everyone loves paper cuts. 
but also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract someone to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be good at this, Yuri. Is that so? I well, suppose I do a little. I do get a little intense, as you'd put it, but in a good way. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Alex. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Bitch hasn't seen my handwriting. If she's asking me to help write, that is all I'm saying, and she should probably not do that. You should definitely make better decisions in her life. I'll help you finish once I finish cutting the ribbons. Uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. She then reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh, the knife is strangely beautiful. It's like fucking gem encrusted holes and life strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. Okay, it's a custom pocket knife. Uh, I'm not embarrassed, you're embarrassed. That's an ordinary pocket knife. It really, it looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You don't think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. She collects knives. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. Seems completely mentally stable. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Uh -huh -huh. You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Yeah, that, that's a compliment that every girl wants to hear. It's kind of intense, just like you are. Besides, it's really cool looking enough. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. So where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the points of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Why would you press your finger hard enough into the knife that it actually hurts you? And not just like, hey, like dummy deck. And just like gently like, not like, damn, oh fuck that saw. Ow. Alex, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. Uh, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. I can cut through skin like it's paper. Just waiting for that to resonate a bit. Okay, we good. Creepy little bitch apparently cuts through skin. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it no and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh huh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and then licks the wound. Uh huh, sure. That's. yep. Yeah. Kinda kinky though. Uh, Startled and sexy pull my hand back. Oh, uh, oh, uh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I. Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri? That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm. I'm sorry. Uh. 
Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Ria, yeah, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, does it lift her head? What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and I lick her index finger in return. At least we're starting off with the kinky stuff, we're not just doing like normal fucking... Normal everyday things, we at least, we're getting right into the kinky stuff. At least she knows where we're coming from, we're being open and honest with her. Did, did you really just do that? Now, now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. I knew it would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Alex. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. And... I don't really know. See, like, this is, I know it was written by US, but I don't even know if a bandage means a plaster. And I don't even know if I know if I say plaster, if people know what the fuck I'm even speaking about, so I don't know if it's called a plaster in the US. Or UK. Or anywhere but South Africa. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We don't really need a bandage, like, real bandage, bandage. For oh, my little finger. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I wish Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I contribute to make progress on the paper. After just attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected, and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. While I just stare at the cupboard in my room. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Uh, that's right. Like... Paints? Oh, okay. A kit of watercolor... Uh, I should read. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it won't- it will be too diluted. Oh, six cups of water, as in like six different cups of water, not a measurement of a, cu a cup. Okay, cool. Taking your advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. What the fuck is a bathroom cup? Who has cups in their bathroom? And for what reason? Yuri, yes. I come and see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. The face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Chat, this is going bad fast. One that has depression and possibly suicidal tendency. One that I'm guessing is a cutter, seeing as she's always wearing long-sleeved stuff and the fact that she referred to her knife going through skin like paper or like skin that didn't even exist. And the fact she's examining her arm. He already, he already dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dro dropping them into the cups. So... I thought we'd do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colours for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang around the wall behind the podium at the front classroom. Ah, oh, neat. What are you going to write? Well, bring me a full fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me, if you say so. Not sure if the thunder is being picked up in the background, if it is, my bad. Or sorry, or not much I can really do. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colours across the banner to serve as a colour guide when we paint. This kind of reminds you of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolours feel feels a lot like the art class project we had back then. It's relaxing. Yuri, uh, 
I'm sorry if it feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. Kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. What if he's heard about Switch? I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Th th that noise? It's a sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No. No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it f for me. It's not your fault. Ah, uh, your face. Uh, I don't know if that was meant to be an insult or not. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Not at all. Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. I don't see it. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a towel. Then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back in front of her. Yeah. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. S sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. W wait, uh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Huh? I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze and vet by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is this the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist, send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly your face seems much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It, it's fine. That was the signal. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. Like if there was ever a signal that she was looking to kiss you, that was a signal. But the signal doesn't exist, so it's fine. But her movements seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitate, retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished filling the night sky with a white dot that looks like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true. But won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and have you bring it in the morning? I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. Haha. Uh -huh. You said that like you're glad it's over. Was it wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that you managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it, it would be irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. Why are we blaming ourselves? No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It's not like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. 
but that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. Oh well. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, and you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles beautifully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Alex. Yuri takes a step close to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Eh. Uh, hi, Alex. Sayori? Just now, we weren't... He he he. It's okay, Alex. I s just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um... Well, it's nice to see you. Cock block by Sayori now. This is great. The music stopped as I decided to take a sip of drinking yogurt. That, that's just amazing. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so, so that's fine, right? Of course. Yuri beams. Yeah, yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Really embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Yuri waves goodbye after her. So, Yuri, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come in here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me feel really, really, really happy that you've made such good friends. I'm going to put an extra really there. I'll forgive me. That's all that matters to me. The tears start to fall down Siori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Alex? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Siori, don't say that. It's true, Alex. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. What did that bitch say now? Our Monica's getting involved. First she cock blocks us. Ah, uh, Sayori's cock blocking us and she's getting involved and ruining her mood. If she hadn't said anything, we might have gotten... Uh, I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before, it's true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel pain anymore. But, but... Tiori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I, I'm scared, Alex. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Tiori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me, Tiori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Alex, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. A and, and, that's enough, Siori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Siori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Remember how I said I always know what's best for you? You still believe me? Wordlessly, Siori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need, mo need most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Fuck. Is this like a... I love you in a best friend kind of way? Or I love you... Or like, I love you like... We gonna get married kind of way. They're not being very clear with this. And I'm kind of worried about that. So, we saved. Let's see what this one goes you. I love you. Yeah? Those are my true feelings. There's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. Spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with everyone every day. It helped me realize that you're truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as I continue like this every day, with you by my side. 
Then I know we'll both be happy, Alex. <sighs> we have to load. I feel so bad, but I've committed to Yuri. Yuri, Yuri is waifu. I've committed. You'll always be my dearest, dearest friend. I feel like such a prick now. I feel so bad. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and will make you happy in the end. I promise it'll help get things back to the way they were. I I see. Suri fa forces a smile and incredibly pained expression. Ah, oh, I feel like such a prick. Okay, we should power through this. We're just going to read. We're going to go. It's what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest. I should write a poem about this. Siori? It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I know this whole time, there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really don't do know me better than anyone, Alex. This is not going well. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Suri's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Catching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't even know how to react. Suri looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Suri. I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support Suri through her feelings and help her in the path that's right. From having as much trouble understanding Suri's feelings as she is, even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. Well, we kind of just told her we're not interested in her and she kind of confessed her love to us, so... Yeah. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they are. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Siori will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. I don't think there's going to be an every day. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one that I'd be walking to school with Siori, but Siori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations of the den should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I rolled it up and take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funny, funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Alex, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. Those are the ones she's prepared that prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. That's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Siori with you. Yeah, she overslept again, that dummy. You think that on days this important should try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Siori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awfully, awful knowing it's, nearly that, it's not, that sim not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake up after all. Uh huh huh? You should take a little responsibility for her, Alex. I mean, especially after ex your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange. Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. The fuck does that have to do with her telling us, like, telling you her dirty, our do dirty laundry? But, but, I stammer embarrassed. Did Suri really tell you about it that quickly? But how basically turned down her confession? That makes you really seem like the bad guy here. We were. Not... Seem like we were flat out, yes. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You know, the, you know the full story. Don't know the full story at all. Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Uh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason, I feel a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets, pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page. 
giving it an almost professional feel. Where did the music go, yo? Where are bangers at? I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during up something. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. This does not bode well for us. Okay. Okay, so all the get out of my head, get out, get out of, get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Yeah, so Sayori so might not be showing up today. Uh... What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Alex, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Yuri's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Yuri, so, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I have a bad feeling about this. I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal at least to wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking to the school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I end up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like, more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Siri's room, I knock on her door. Siori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really wouldn't, didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't this kind of a breach of privacy? Which really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Tiori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Tiori I'd be there for her. I told her I know what's best for her and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession. That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. But I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her I know she wants it out of our relationship. And I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can... Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset, reset and try something different. I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now... I can never take it back. Never. 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 Oh shit. So 
so they just... Overwrite her? She doesn't really exist? You can't just go back? They're just like no game, not like I can't. Okay. School days in ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After pick up my things, I stare blank at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Alex. Monica. Oh my goodness! I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. While we really talked, we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having a smile at me genu genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. If there's any construction paper in here, or markers, I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Uh -huh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. But I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. There's like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? It sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, uh huh. It's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that, but it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything, reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of our members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? Just the sister that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. I mean, besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Alex. Any chance you're still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at least very, at the very least, visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I'll go check it out. Uh, awesome. You're really sweet, Alex, you know that. It's, it's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time, which are more important. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Eh? Uh, a guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Alex. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki, the girl with the sour attitude's name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognize. This will figure makes you probably think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's, it's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Well, it's time. It's nice to meet you both. So I ran into Alex in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica? Did I tell you to let me know in advance before we brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know, sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, just I happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Did we just play against the game, through the game again, just with our, our friend that we basically killed? In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Alex? Because of a few desks arranged to form a table, Yuri walks the corner of the room and opens the closet. 
Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other, still feeling awkward to take a seat next to Monica. So he didn't really plan on coming here. It'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As presidents of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. And surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It's hard to start a new club. You could put it, uh, you could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Just when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that they're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this, grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well... I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find these two. Yuri turns the table carrying a tea set. He carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. Keep a whole tea set in his classroom. Don't worry, the teacher gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Hehehe, <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, uh, that's not... Insulted Yuri looks away. I mean, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a passion for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I, I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles herself in relief. So, Alex, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read in the past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. Manga? I muttered quietly to myself, half joking, that Suki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke with... Out... Thinking after seeing... Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces a remote teacup with her finger. My favourites are usually novels that build up deep and complex fantasy worlds. Girls still a fan of Lord of the Rings. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with the rock. Now comes the question of do we actually get to have a girlfriend or do you just now nah, get them killed off one by one by one because we are a horrible person? Uh, uh huh, I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. We hate you, so it's fine. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... The sucky eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Wh what What gives you that idea? If the piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting, it looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. I'm not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. I think the level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing them the deepest reaches of your heart. You have writing experience too, Yuri. Maybe if you share some of your work, you can s set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable at enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We'll sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. 
Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice presidents after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides now we may, that we may have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Well, then make me dope-ass cupcakes this time, so I'm slightly less impressed. Do you agree as well, Alex? Hold on, there's still one problem. Uh, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and, um, I lose my train of thoughts. All three girls step back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought, hmm. Uh, the girls exchange glance before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Alex. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if you don't find one more before the festival, I, I'm defenseless against these girls. I'm supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this. Do I need a sneeze? Maybe. I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides the club itself, it seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend a day, every day with these beautiful girls, Right, okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Alex? Yeah. It could be fun, right? Really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Alex, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this, you're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignments. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Alex, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hee hee hee. Yeah. Can I really impress this class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the ex anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess it starts writing a poem tonight. So does Monica replace he who shall not be named? <laughs> Just fucking wonderful. Today I cut my skin open for the first time. It was exhilarating. I think I understand how feels now. I'm supposed to be the responsible one. So, so I don't think I'll be doing it again, unless I decide to kill myself. I left a memento for the occasion below. Why is this getting worse and worse? Oh. I feel like this is not getting any better. This makes it a lot easier to pick now because there's only one, like, emo chick now, not two. Just pick the big words and sad words, and those normally line up with Yuri. But now my only question, like I'm thinking now, is does this choice actually matter? 
there's obviously more than one word that relates to each person. So is it just like a thicker word or are there some that actually correlate to certain happenings? Like, I'm not sure. If there's actually something that actually matters. Hi again, Alex. Glad to see you didn't run away on us, haha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange to me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come and so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping a promise, Alex. I was isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive head first into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh come on, Lucky deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously then you won't see the end of it. Sure. Manga is literature, swiftly defeats it and Suka plops back into her seat. I'm sorry Alex, we'll make sure to put, to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now, so it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. W wait I didn't mean it like that, uh... If you really don't want, then... Forget I said anything, I guess. I know it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be part of this club, so even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches in the bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I bought that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? It's not accidental. She even picked up a book that thinks I like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. At the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I can't tell the music is off and on and it's super bugging me now. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be the first on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She takes another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. S Sorry, I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... The book that you gave me, that's the book that you gave me, right? Hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason, just curious how come you have two copies of the same book. Uh, well when I stopped in the bookstore yesterday, and that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story, is that so? What's the story about anyway? Well, hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of uh, Markov. Reminds of Makarov from Call of Duty. Probably not related. Also, games probably aren't related. In fairness, no one speaks Russian in this game. There's an ominous looking arsenal on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human ex experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this 
trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse and it starts selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. She does have purple hair, though, so we could kind of expect that. Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Alex? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. I totally forgot that Yuri is into these things, those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story is the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Um, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. I know things like books and writing fill my thoughts. I didn't press there. That wasn't me. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. And the least I can do is... Listen, it's a literature club after all. Uh... That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y yes I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I put into my bag. Alright, it's fine. If I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah? Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to, it's just something I'm not very used to. That's it, reading in company with someone else. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about the reading and company. It's if I can feel the presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe it'll distract him, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my arm. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I'm pretty sure I saw I was just bathing in that. And that is a direct quote from she who shall not be named and she who does not exist poems. I love how I did that at the right point to me trying to make a point and be like super. I wear a glass in. Yeah. Yuri, you really need to apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do. I re don't really mean to. Sorry, I mean... Uh-huh. Yeah, this should work, right? I slide my desk up until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri somebody closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a bit closer, our shoulders are almost touching. This is very stupid. You shouldn't read a book together as a fucking, like... If you want to read a book as a couple's thing... I don't know, activity? You should each ultimately read your own copy of the same book, surely? And then discuss the book. Not like, well, each shall read the same fucking book. We had this debate yesterday. Moving on. It's still stupid. Looks like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to open the book. I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her f thumb and her forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we are huddled even closer together than before. Actually kind of distracting me. It's like I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Uh, to turn the page? Uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah. 
Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, but turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. A thumb jump, gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Alex. Hey, Yuri. I don't know why I said my name first, but sure. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not, really. I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Uh... That's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? N never mind. We didn't ever get that far. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know what came into my head. This is also going to go badly. Uh-huh. Yuri, are you feeling alright? Uh... Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand on her chest to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Alex? Something happened just now. Uh, I have no idea. Yuri's acting a little strange, I guess. Do you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, uh, no, not really. I'm just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing. Uh-huh, don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes. It's nothing alarming. All right, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other, eh? Uh, let me wait for Yuri. Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started with Ado. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and slip it back into my bag. Well, we still on fuck Natsuki train, so we'll do Monica. I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem and I wanted to know I'm putting an effort. Hi Alex, having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring these things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Kinda makes sense. Anyway. Want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Uh-huh. Don't worry, Alex. We're a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's the sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm... Great job, Alex. I was going oh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect it to go from something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. Yep, if you just perform just above shit, people like you. Or are impressed. That's what always counts. Jesus, my hand seems so much bigger there. Perspective on cameras. That's why it always counts when I put in some effort. Uh-huh, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuki likes this kind of writing, right? Writing is full of imagery and symbolism. I don't know why I said Yuki instead of Yuri. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. Sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. That's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. This is really star for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Oh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Like earlier, I think she gets too stimulated. She ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. We'll start sharing our poems with each other. Er, uh, already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time. So I'm more glad So I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose you should get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. That's because I have I have to sound confident. But it doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole and wall. But he wasn't looking at me, confused I frantically glanced at my surroundings. 
My burned eyes can no longer see color. You've got a you. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Are there simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic, there must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. I'm pretty sure it's not the same as the first one. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very free from it's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh-huh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. There's a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. Performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure... Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I just could say that I have had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writings of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down in the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you just get a big dark puddle of ink. Oh yeah, this is a chick who's never used a ballpoint pen. So you just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, well, we're going to do waifu first. As you read the poems, I notice our eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? Did I say that out loud? Guri's, Guri's fist covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? The use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. It's actually my first time, really, huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. He traces her finger along the words in the poem as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having be been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and make the form fit the two together. The end result is both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds a train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. Of course, Wafu has got some skills. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work. Together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. Also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased how? Um, but she's a bitch. Well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is positive himself to me or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Which self is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breaking air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. It took you a long time to... Okay, so that's not a time thing that she just always says. At least that we know. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. It's the first time sharing. I want to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Oh, into ghosts, Yuri. 
Hoo hoo. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Alex. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings and experiences in their work. They should do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comforts, unable to let go of the past. And seems to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive, uh? It's, it's nothing really. Yours was impressive too, so nah. If anything, I could possibly learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Alex. Uh, me too. Okay, now we're going to get our poem ripped to shreds by Natsuki and her stupid animal poem. Alex, if you're going to take this club seriously, if you're not going to, then go home. W what? Harsh. What, do you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Did you, do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. It all starts somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'll tell you what's improved, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I've got to share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Uh-huh. It is. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you you weren't going to like it. No, who the fuck would like that except for a two-year-old? What? Just be honest, I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. People don't ever take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style shouldn't... Your writing style wouldn't make your messages any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can really be disheartening, so it does decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into, the, into it than I realised. That's what happened, that's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. As if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a liter literature club after all. I saw. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in a notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What? What's with this language? It's what you call have like being sophisticated and not writing like a fucking grade two. Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? Yeah? I mean, you have to try that hard to come with something nice to say. Yeah. 100%. Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, 
I'd have asked someone who actually likes it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Alex did too. So based on that, I'd gladly give you some suggestion of my own. First of all, excuse me. Yeah, bitch, what can I help you? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. No, no, no. And Alex liked my poem too, you know. Then told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Huh? That's not what I... Ooh. You, you just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Alex appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice? Are you that full of yourself? N no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh, well you know what? I wasn't the one whose booze magic grew so as big as soon as Alex started showing up. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities and others... Like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me, look who's talking, you wanna be edgy, bitch. Edgy? Sorry that my last thoughts too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? I don't have a good feeling about this. Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with a sickening attitude. I think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute. The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. This is not going well, chat. Wait, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, okay, that one, that one was kind of funny. Oh, my bad, you already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting yourself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Alex hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, suddenly Yuri turns toward me as if she just noticed I was standing here. Alex, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That That's not true, she started it. How is this getting worse and worse each time we do this? Well, we're gonna go with Yuri, because I feel like she's Apart from her being wild fish, she seems like the most unstable one. Um, hey Alex, why don't we step outside for a little bit, okay? Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's very better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. The fuck is happening? So because it's your, the, she who shall not be named and doesn't exist isn't here, this whole thing's going to shit they're going to kill each other? I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes, but I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with others, then that's fine. I'd be able to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Nasuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear, well it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. Yuri's rocking back and forth in a desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I, I didn't mean it. I, I believe you. I've no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki, or did. Alex, please don't hate me, please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. Oh, it's fine, Yuri. You know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It, it's not that. 
It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Alex. It wouldn't... It would just be embarrassing with you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? No, not really. I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate you and... Uh, I am so confused. Oh shit, it literally raised her. Okay. Literally raised the slot. That's bullshit. Yeah, I think that is where we're going to call it for today. I have to be done streaming for today, but just thank you so much for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you so much. If you're watching this on Twitch and would like to watch the rest on YouTube or the first part on YouTube, I'm more than welcome to do so. Ooh, my bad. But more importantly, no matter where you're watching on, just thank you so much for watching, taking the time to actually watch the stream. If you are watching on YouTube, you can come join us live. Link will be down in the description below, like always. But that's about all for now. So most of all, just thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope you guys will enjoy me. Join me in the next stream. Bye for now.